Book Club is brought to you by the Peters Central Public Library. I am Miss Shannon. And I'm Miss Linda. And we are back in the library uh, bringing you information from Youth Services Department of things to look forward to in April. And if you can't be here, we'll come to you. Right? Yep. So we are Virtually, open. Yes. We are open and uh, limited services right now still, but at least we are open. You can bring your bodies in and your smiles and say hello, and uh, we can enjoy that. Yeah. And pick out your own things. And... Exactly. No, oh, I'm glad to see people back. Yeah. A lot no of offense, the kids have been but so we only excited. have each other to talk to. Yeah. It gets, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to say to that. But okay, you, you don't have to say anything. <laughs> Because we're always having a hard time of things to talk about. Oh, yeah, you and I always lack for words <laughs> or thoughts. Oh, all right. On that note, I guess nothing has changed with us at Book Buzz. All right. Do you have some Pandemic buzz Pandemic or none or not. You know, nothing changes with us. <laughs> we are still the same. All right. We are doing Book Buzz Bits, things that we think, let me put it a different way, things that I think that you should know. <laughs> or um, even if you don't think you should know it, I'm going to tell it to She's you She's going to tell you anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I like this one. This is um, an article that was in, um, off of ed edutopia.org, and it's about Mo Willems, one of the children's favorite authors mm -hmm. around here with Elephant and Piggy and Pigeon. And... Um, what he's talking about in this article is about creativity, drawing as empathy, and letting kids do 51% of the work. Um, this article is written by Emily Kaplan, and um, it highlights the importance of uh, being silly because Mo Willems believes that um, this generation has lost the art of being silly. And the parents have lost that too. Hmm. And when the parents lose that, I guess you don't, you what know. What kind of fun is that, right? Exactly. Well, you know what? I mean, off, uh, before I get into this, when you think about it right now with what the world is going through with the mm -hmm. pandemic and all the other issues and things that are going, boy, you know, it's hard to feel silly. Yeah. You know, but I think that, you know, taking the time with the children probably would help us through all of this mm -hmm. to take a breather and just be silly. So anyway, um, Mo Willem starts out by saying, I don't think I'm more unique than anyone else. What I want to bring to the table is a respect for kids and, um, and letting them create 49% of the work and leaving enough space for the readers to create, um, or the readers to create the remaining 51%. When people are engaged and actually have a part to play in the story, the story means more. So he uses an example, one of my favorites, and probably everybody that knows Mo Willems and Pigeon is, don't let the pigeon drive the bus. <laughs> we all know that one. And the audience, he said in here when he wrote it, the audience is never instructed to say no. The fun is in having to figure that out. He said, for me, a good book is a question, not an answer. It's about asking fundamental questions. What is friendship? Why are people the way they are? Um, how do you talk to somebody about, um, you know, about what they don't like or what they do like? Well, why can't I drive a bus? That would be the perfect <laughs> one for a little kid. Well, why can't I drive that bus? Little boys in, into mm -hmm. their their vehicles and Big transportation, vehicles, yes. exactly. So um, he said, he, I think with grown-ups, he said, what I'm trying to encourage um, is a full shameectomy. I like that word, shameectomy. He said, Sounds embarrassment. It, <laughs> shame, I don't know. Is that up there with a lobotomy? Shameectomy. <laughs> embarrassment is le I learned disease that begins to manifest itself in early adolescence. And by adulthood, if you, it, it can have ossified your entire spirit. A saving grace of having kids is that for the first time in maybe a very long time, there's permission to be silly, and I encourage that. Um, 
So he, he talks more about being creative by writing, drawing, singing songs, doing silly things. Um, otherwise, uh, you know, he, he puts it like otherwise, you know, do all of this and, and you're claiming that you're a creative person, then you need to act like it and do it so that the kids see it. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, um, you're lying. <laughs> he puts, otherwise you're lying and the kids smell a lie. You know, so show your creativity. If you're this, you know, then then show it. A lot of my work over the last couple of years has been trying to create situations that allow the grown-ups in kids' lives to be sillier by doodling and drawing, demonstrating the joy in the creative process. If I'm doing a drawing demonstration, it's for everyone because drawing is a physicalized form of empathy and who can't use a little bit more of that? So I, I just like that thought. I think right now, um, <laughs> this is a, a cute thought. Um, I think right now, just l like I said earlier, just taking the moment to be silly. Mm -hmm. It's hard to feel silly mm -hmm. and to, you know, but he did make a point. The kids change everything yeah, with they that. Do. They really yeah. do. Well, I mean, we were always pretty silly in my house pre pre kid, but I guess maybe that's unique. <laughs> no, I mean, well, it could. I don't know. I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of silly. There are a lot of silly households. Um, it's a blessing, you yeah. know. That is that's a you know. Um, I think nowadays people there's so much seriousness, mm -hmm. and and everybody's so busy that you're going. Shh, you yeah. don't slow down to even take a True. breath and be silly. True. Uh, one more thing. Um, what, I'm going to end with this one because this was uh, two things. One is his the big influence on Mo Willems and how he's created his characters and what he does was Peanuts by Charles Schultz. You that can't was go the, wrong big, with the Snoopy. That was the big influence. And, the que and then there was a question, do you relate more to elephant or to piggy? And he says, I aspire to pigginess and am regretfully more elephantine than I want to be. And thankfully, less pigeony than I once was. <laughs> so I guess that covers it all. All yeah, right. That's so Mo funny. Willems, yep. we're going to be silly. Yep. We are pretty silly in this uh, yeah, well, in this part say, of the library. I can't speak for the rest, but no. in our in our corner, we tend to be. We, uh, know, we, we, we we're we are, out, we're out there. Yeah, we're, we're definitely we we reached the silly quota. Yeah, but Mo Willems was when the pandemic first started. He was doing those um, free little videos to teaching the kids how to draw his, right. his characters right. and they're still on youtube and i highly recommend them even for like adults uh -huh. like um one day it was like a rainy day or whatever and our caregiver did it with lucas and her son and he came home with all these pictures and like it was he did such a good job and lucas is not he doesn't have any much drawing skills yeah. i'll go ahead and say that he's got talents and other things but that's that's <laughs> but, exactly but what like he's he, saying yeah he did a really exactly. good job like in like as he goes through and shows them and and it yeah so i highly recommend looking those up on youtube that i could use that i can't draw for to save my life <laughs> yep good okay <laughs> all right well let's move on so yeah. We're in April, so we are starting our spring programming. I can't believe that we're now in spring. It's been a full year of virtual programming now for the Peters Township Library. But can I library. say just some two words? Thank God. Thank God for spring? Yes. And it's right We've now survived. we're filming. The sun is shining. It's yep. beautiful outside. Absolutely. That is a huge piece in our psyche. Yes. I, yeah. And talking about being silly and people being like so uptight and things right yeah. now, I think now that the, the weather has broken, the, everybody, adults and children alike can get outside of their houses and absolutely and forget and, about and, 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 yeah, everything for a while. For sure. So with that being said, yes, we're mm -hmm. on our full year now virtual programming, which is hard to believe. Mm -hmm. um, but we're going to be starting up all of our spring stuff, and we're doing a little bit, some, some things bringing back from the fall and the winter, but some things we're twisting up a little bit. Mm -hmm. One thing we are bringing back is the calendar time, so you can uh, join me every weekday um, for a little calendar time. It's the five to, usually around five minute video, um, sometimes longer, depending. Um, and some, well, it's longer depending where we are in the month because sometimes we've got a lot more counting to do to get to that date. <laughs> true, very true. But anyways, um, so it's a lot of fun, uh, basic counting skills, um, 
letter sounds, letter recognition, mm -hmm. a lot of those preschool um, concepts and kindergarten concepts too yep. that we do every uh, Monday through Friday. Those go up on our YouTube, or excuse me, on our Facebook page at 9 a.m. weekdays, but they all live on our YouTube page always. So if you know, if you, this is something better for you guys to watch when you're eating your breakfast at seven or before dinner, you know, whatever, mm -hmm. like the calendar. I mean, it's, it is time sensitive because, you know, you can, if you want to talk about Tuesday on a Thursday, that's your own yeah, decision. Cool. But <laughs> so things just on a different day. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so we have that coming back up. And then we're starting something new. Um, we're going to try out in April. It's a teen virtual game night. We found a um, online platform that does not require any, that's a safe, secured platform that does not require any subscription services or anything like that where you can um, get invited to play um, different games with your friends, mm -hmm. but, we'll, but we'll be overseeing it um, and like having doing it through um, Zoom so we can have like discussions mm -hmm. and stuff going on th simultaneously of playing these games. Now, it's because of branding and stuff, they couldn't use like the actual name of the game. So there's, so there's one that's totally Uno, but it's called Solo. Oh, so there's okay. that's on there. And there's some like different like kind oh, of like, like Dungeons and Dragons style games. <laughs> what? <laughs> I didn't say the name, right? Exactly. Hey, I'm not the uh, one. But it's but, just amongst ourselves, right? right. You're right. Yeah. But um, so anyway, so the, we're gonna try that at, on April 8th at seven o'clock. So um, you do have to register for it because we're gonna give you a link and we'll be emailing you um, directions on how to join us on that platform. But something different, you know, a nice like game night with with friends and something adults might in, enjoy too. Um, we can even change it into an adult program at some point. But for now, teen virtual game night, seven o'clock, April 8th. Sounds fun. Yeah, I'm well, looking forward to it. I like games. Oh, yeah, absolutely. All right, then moving on. Um, I filmed this one episode yesterday, as a matter of fact. One Mindful Moment is back on Monday mornings. So that'll start this Monday at 9 a.m. So it's geared for children, and it's to get them to um, start their week off uh, feeling good and um, hopefully holding that thought through the whole week. And this will be every Monday morning, there'll be a different one. And I will tell you this, the first one that I did is major, major, major breathing. So that's, that's the, big, um, the big point of that. Um, bedtime story times. Well, these used to be lunchtime story times. We will no longer be showing these at lunchtime. We are going to do it at maybe even right before your child's bedtime. What um, starts next week, is it? Seven o'clock. Seven o'clock? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I put the wrong time on here. But it is seven o'clock. And a lot of kids at that age do, you know, start winding down. Mm -hmm. So, you know, sit back and enjoy one of them. Ideally. Off. Huh? <laughs> Ideally they do, Ideally. Right? <laughs> In a perfect world, <laughs> your child might be slowing down and getting ready for bed. Um, and we can get them there by offering a bedtime story time. Yes. All right. Very cool. Okay. Oh, Excuse me. Go. Okay. So we are... Um, uh, for teens, we've been doing a lot of, well, for all ages, we've been doing a lot of different kinds of mm -hmm. take and make activities. Um, and we have a really, I'm really excited about the one we have coming up here in April. And we're going to do, we found in, in our great clean out, a whole case, I don't know why, of light switch plates. Oh, yeah. I remembered that when we did that project 100 years ago. Well, we're and doing we it again. Yeah. So we <laughs> <laughs> So we, are, we found a really cute way to do a Harry Potter one, um, that which, like, Lumos means to turn the light on in, you know, in Harry Potter right. 1. So we're going to, with our Cricut, we're going to create little um, decals that you can put on these. And we'll give you the directions on how to do it. We'll already have the decals um, printed and weeded. So guess what, Linda? You'll get to do some Cricut weeding because you love to so much. I'm so good um, at it. <laughs> <laughs> and then you'll have your nice little kit with directions on how to put that together. So it'll be really cute little take and make um, thing for April. And then we also have our Choose Your Own Adventure um, book club, which is gonna meet on April 17th. They read through, um, we, they, we use the document camera so you can see the whole book. Um, they read through a book and then they, they pause and decide what's gonna happen um, next in the story as a group. So it's pretty fun, it's through Zoom, so registration is required in order to get that Zoom link. Um, but it's been a lot of fun. We've had some really good feedback on it from mm -hmm. a couple families. So. 
it's good. And then in May, um, instead of using the Choose Your Own Adventure series that Miss Cindy's been using, she's going to pull, we have this new um, Star Wars Choose Your Own mm -hmm. Adventure series. So since May, May the 4th is a big Star Wars time, mm -hmm. little twist, we're gonna do a Star Wars cool. one. So Love I think it. that will be a lot of fun. I happen to, uh, on this subject, uh, work one Saturday when Miss Sydney had this program going. Mm -hmm. And I wanna say, like, I was really enjoying it myself listening to her how she is engaging to you know getting the children engaged mm -hmm. with uh, making the decisions and then going back and doing the story over and making the decisions and uh, she did a wonderful job so if you've not had a chance to try if your um, tween or teen hasn't had a chance to try to um, I think it's actually geared towards like the more like elementary school yeah because she's using like the um Oh, that's right. That's ones. the younger ones. Okay, mm -hmm. so yeah, elementary, early tweens, you know, so what, second, third, fourth, fifth. Yeah. Um, she does a great job. I would strongly recommend it. A lot of All fun. right, speaking of those tweens, I am going to be having, um, we'll talk about this again next time, but I wanted to mention our tween book club read for this month is The War That Saved My Life. Forgot to bring over a copy of it by Kimberly Brubaker Bradley. Excellent, excellent book. And we're going to discuss it um, on April 22nd, which I'll talk about again. But the reason I bring it up is if you register, the first five registrants get a um, complimentary, complimentary copy from us. So uh, we'll talk about that more next time. But please register and come in and get your copy so that you can start reading. I'm very excited about this next one. Oh my gosh, we haven't had him back here in so long. Um, this will be the first time that we're trying it via Zoom. I know everything is Zoom these days, but you know, better that than, in my opinion, better that than not having anything and having any programs. And Mr. Pete is a chess champion who has been here once a month, he would come once a month to teach the children, free of charge, volunteering his time, um, to teach them how to play chess. And um, actually, if they already know how to help um, make them better. So, but the cool thing is, Mr. Pete is gonna be doing it twice a month for us. We're gonna see how it goes on Zoom. Um, it's The first one is going to be April 6th. And uh, that, that'll be at 6.30. You have to register in order to get the Zoom link. So Mr. Pete will be here April 6th and two weeks later on April 20th. So chess is back. Yeah, I can't wait to see how it all plays out. Yeah, me too. I'm looking forward to yeah. it and seeing. You know, we might have to tweak it or do things and whatever, but it's, it's so worth a try. I think it'll I, be cool for very, sure. Very, very much so. And one last thing on my part here is STEM Saturday. It's always the second Saturday of the month. And the STEM um, program for April, which is April 10th, and that uh, airs, that's a Saturday, it airs at 10 a.m., um, is called, I called it Measuring Up. And you are going to get things in your kit about measuring and um, a book, actually a fun book about length and um, you have to register to get your kit so get online register for your spot and then we'll get those come in and grab your kit so again that's April 10th very fun wow busy busy I know so um, April is also um, National Poetry Month yep. and it's also National Library Week falls the first full week of April the 4th through the 10th so for teens, for, in honor of National Library Week, we're gonna have a teen virtual book facing contest. Um, we've done this program both virtually and in house. Um, but what you do is you take a book, and I didn't really grab a good one for it, but I can try to do my best yeah, just, here. Yeah. Um, and you use part of the book, like this one has a person's face, and if you hold it a certain way, you know, and you can tweak it with, you know, you're holding, you know, doing your selfie or whatever, to make it look like that book is part of you or you're mm -hmm. a continuation of the book so like or if you had one like this you know to try to turn it so that his 
body and your face kind of connect somehow. If you get if you start looking at covers of books, you can get really creative with it. Oh, and we're yeah. going to have um, a book facing contest. So all you do is just take some pictures of yourself with books as your face, or even I've seen ones where the book has hands on the cover and you can use that. However you can get it to work, be creative. Um, we do have some samples we'll be posting just to give you some ideas. And just email us a, a picture or, or even comment on our Facebook page with one for a chance to win a prize. So, you know, fun, easy, you know, way mm -hmm. to like think differently yeah, in how you look I at the cover of a book. Creative. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yep, and Easy. along with that, um, we're going to be doing some spine label poetry, which is when you take a stack of books, which I don't know if I have a good example of that either. Oh, well, that's okay. You can okay, just... but anyway, so you take a stack of books and the titles line up to create a poem or a saying or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, so if you pull them around, you can really get creative with that as well. So that's going to be for National Poetry Month. So the entire month of April, you can have a chance to do this. So you can send one to us every single day. You can mm. send one to us once. It doesn't matter. But go through your own bookshelf, come to the library, pull a bunch of books off of our shelves, mm -hmm. and um, take some pictures and try to make a poem or a little phrase mm -hmm. using the, the titles it's of books. It's fun. It's mm -hmm. very creative, too. Mm -hmm. I love that. I yep. like when they do that. For sure. So that's going to be for April for uh, teens. Excellent. All right. And of course, in case we didn't have enough programming going on, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Tiny Tunes that also airs once a month, the second Monday of the month. It'll be April 12th, 1030 a.m. You have to register for a kit. And keeping with the theme of Easter and April, we are going to make egg shakers. So you are going to get a kit to be able to um, make the shakers and um, play along with some um, exercises, some kind of fun activities that you can do with your shakers as far as music goes and, you know, and playing with them. So again, register for that so that you can get your Tiny Tunes kit. And, uh-oh, Miss Patty's back, mm -hmm. Mother Goose, Book Baby, so, so popular. She's yep. hilarious. Yeah, filming her videos is my highlight of the month. I will say. Yeah, she's, I do my best to keep it like, she's she's talk about being silly. Yeah, yeah. She's figured out how to do it to nobody, right, <laughs> like exactly. you know, to a screen. Right. It's, it's, I have to say that it is very different for us. Right. Filming our programs, it to put on air but we're filming in front of nobody. Right. You know, it's it really lacks. You know, we like that participation. We want you back. Right. But we'll get there. So so anyway, Miss Patty is back. Watch for the Mother Goose and Book Babies segments. Mm -hmm. Must register for those, too, because we'll send you the links and information. Thank so, you. That's yep. right. And then, of course, April, there, it's a new month. And, of course, we have new books. So watch for that. I will be sharing some of, some of the new books that have come in or will be coming in for the youth services department. That is uh, children as, as well as young adult. Yep. Oh, I'm, I'm exhausted. <laughs> oh. All right. So Ooh. what do we have? Well, you know, we do still have a couple days till Easter. Yep. And um, so I want you guys to don't forget, get over to the library and grab yeah. some Easter books. Not yeah, only do we have yours. ones for a bunch of kids. This is actually my favorite. This is Happy Easter, Davy. This is the one that I did for my Easter story. It's about a little bunny who wants to save Easter, for, make his Easter extra special for his family. Aww. And of course, Ollie's Easter eggs. We love Ollie and mm -hmm. the duck and the goose. And mm -hmm. oh, so cute. Um, this one's a cute one, too. This is Patch's Easter adventure. And it's about a little boy and his stuffed bunny. Um, kind of in some ways reminds me of Velotine Rabbit. And of course, not only do we have just storybooks about Easter, we have crafts, because Easter's a good time for crafting. Absolutely. And we have books even for our older kids. There's, you know, Judy B. Jones, um, other series like that has some Easter stories too. I love this one with her in that funny costume. Does that remind you of a Christmas story? Yes, it does. You know? Which I'm not a fan. But Poor that, Ralphie. Yeah, Judy B. Jones, <laughs> first grader, dumb bunny. Right. So she does not look very happy to be this bunny. But so... Yeah, something fun for all ages. So hippity hoppity over to the library and uh, and get some Easter books to read this this you know the beginning of the month. Absolutely, and since um, the first week of April, 
is right before Easter, watch uh, those bedtime story time. The theme this that week is um, Easter. Mm -hmm. So each of us uh, librarians, um, the four of us, uh, will do a story Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday uh, at the bedtime hour now at 7 p.m. Um, and it's the Easter theme. And you showed, you did the Davy one. Yeah. And this is the one I did by Natasha Wing the night before Easter. Oh, that's a cute one too. Which when I would do it for the kids, you know, you'd start out, I'd ask everybody, I'd say, how many of you know uh, the night before Christmas? And everybody would raise their hand, raise their hand, raise their hand. And I'd say, okay, I'm not going to read that one. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's not that one. It's the night before Easter. It's cute. That's the one that I did that'll be, I think, my day's Wednesday mm -hmm. that you'll see that. And it's hilarious. And it has the um, beat and the momentum as as uh, Twas the Night Before Christmas. Oh, cute. It's really cute. And then how he leaves. And it, it's, uh, it's adorable. Um, this will be back on the shelf. Uh, you can definitely come and check out. We have to put some of these back on. Yeah, I was going through them this morning. They're so, there's so many gone. Yeah, good. You know, Thank you for coming good. and using the library. Now that we're open, they can come and grab them, and that's great. Absolutely. So, that's it. Yeah. For the first part, because we're going to be back with part two. two to see what's going on the next All half right. of April. See you next time. <laughs> Have a good one. Yeah.